Hello, I'm Gary Lord and I was a professional decorative painter for 45 years and I did a lot of kitchen cabinet makeovers. So today my goal is to show you how you can repaint your kitchen cabinets uh, without doing it as a professional because we would spray all of our cabinets to make it like a factory finish. But you can also do it with a brush and roller and that's what I'm going to teach you today. So some of the tools you're going to need is 220 sandpaper. That's one of the things that you're going to want to use is a 220 grit sandpaper. You're going to want to have a cleaning agent like Gloss Off by Crud Cutter. This allows the paint to bond to your surface. Then you're going to want a primer that will stick to your surface. There's many different ones. You can ask your paint store which one will bond to a cabinet finish, but you want to use a primer. And then you want to use a finished coat of paint. And we prefer, one of the brands we prefer is PPG's Breakthrough because it bonds really well and lays off really nice. Uh, so you don't see all the brush strokes or the roller marks if you do it correctly. So those are the items that we like. You'll need to have a roller. And I like to use the quarter inch nap sleeve. These are very short. Uh, they give less pixelation on your surface. And then you'll have to have a brush to go along with it. Any nice brush will work. And those roller sleeves come in white, or this is called a velour sleeve, and it's pinkish. So now I'm gonna go ahead and get started and show you what to do. The first thing is your cabinets need to be cleaned and sanded lightly, and then use the crud cutter to uh, degloss them. So anytime you sand with your sandpaper, you always go with the direction of the wood. You would never want to go contrary to the direction of the wood. You always flow with that same direction. All you have to do is a light sand. We call it one, two, three. One, two, three. That's about all you need. And then take your deglosser and have a rag and saturate it so it's pretty wet. Now, some people uh, have sensitive hands, so you would want to wear gloves during this process. So don't know who you are, so you may want to wear gloves when you do this. So now you take that and in a circular motion, you clean that surface, getting all of that dust off as well as any wax, any, de any contaminant that may be on that surface. Make sure you get right into the grooves as well. You want to make sure everything gets hit with that deglosser. And then once that's done, keep your rag saturated as you go through this because it'll dry out on you. Then you take a clean damp rag. As you can see, I have two different colors on purpose. One's my deglossing rag. Once by wipe down clean rag, this just needs to be damp, wipe it off and make sure you get all those areas again, like we talked about. This rag you'll have to wash out, rinse out, wring out as you go through the day because it'll get saturated and you want to just clean these surfaces. Now that is ready to paint after 10 minutes. It has to dry roughly 10 minutes and then Using this deglosser, you can wait a week, two weeks, it doesn't matter. That surface is now ready to paint when you're ready to paint. So next up is my primer. I already have the primer in my container. I already have my roller. And this sample board's already been primed down below, so I can show you the next step. But I'm going to prime up here, and then I'll put my finish coat down here. Oftentimes, you'll have to have two finish coats. I don't think we'll do that today, but you'll get the idea what it looks like to how to do it. So you take your brush and only have a little bit on it. You don't need it fully saturated. And what I like to do is I like to stipple into my contoured areas, as you can see. So I'll just take that and stipple those areas. Now I'll come back in a second and I'll use my roller and I'll roll those areas smooth. When you get your roller, a tip for you is never fully saturate it, always offload it like I am here, so it's not like dripping. You wanna have a nice 100% coat on here, but not dripping. 
Then you roll it smooth and even. You may have to come in and stipple these edges too. That's okay if you get it onto the area I just painted because I'll lay it off. That means basically make it go smooth with that next pass anyway. So now I'll take my roller and I'm laying it off smooth. I do the same inside the grooves. This simulates very close a spray to finish. It's not as good, but it's pretty darn close. Then on these flats, you do the same thing. And then on these outside edges, I will do the same process. I take my brush, only a little bit on it, tap it off. Take this and tap, tap, tap along the sides. And then I'll lay that off in a minute as well. Now that's all done. Take my roller and I'll roll that smooth. And light pressure is your key. If you press too hard, it'll streak. So just light pressure, 100% coverage and you just want to go real light over it. This will take, you know, you could even let this dry overnight before you go to your finish coat step. Probably be a better idea to do that. So now you can see that's what it looks like when it's basically done. And you look for any spots where it may be too thick or where you skipped and make sure you get all of that covered. So now, once it's dry, it looks like this. So we're gonna to go to the next step, which is I'm gonna use the Breakthrough Paint Color, and we just had this one here in stock. You can pick, with this PPG, any paint that's in their paint deck. Doesn't matter what color you like, you can find it in one of those paint decks. Same deal now, this is a different brush, but it won't matter. This is a different roller, but it won't matter because the process still remains the same. So now I'm gonna take it and paint it. And this paint I've thinned down just a little bit. And you can see how nice that lays off on that surface. And I'm stroking it in again, but I will roll it like I did before. Take it, remember, I want to take a little bit, take it in, dip my roller into it, make it go even, roll it off on the container so it's not dripping, and then paint it nice and even. Look how pretty that is. I mean, it, it really does, if you do it right, it's amazing how close it simulates a sprayed factory finish. It's really quite nice. And this is just one coat. Now, most likely, you might need two coats, so plan on doing that. It's rare that you can get this done in one coat. Uh, and that's okay, you just plan accordingly. And again, I tap in, I make sure I'm getting in all those edges. Roll it off on the face again. Light pressure. Even long consistent stroke is what you're looking for. You don't need to press hard. Take my roller again. I mean my brush again. Do the same thing. Now I'm just going to paint right down that edge. This breakthrough, I love this paint. It really lays off super nice. Gives you a professional finish. And it's very easy to do. You can see this is wet. That's why you don't want to do it. Uh, it'll mess up. Yeah, that's why you let it dry overnight. You don't want to do that when it's all wet. So nice and lay it off again. Do the same thing on these sides and edges. So consistency is the key with good decorative painting. So you always look to make sure that it's the same everywhere. So now I'm going to come back in with my roller, lay off that really nice and even, very light pressure. And that is basically how you can 
paint your kitchen cabinets. So I hope you enjoyed the video.